Baltimore is a small town in New York with a population of just over 3,000 people. In 2007, the first images of the town were uploaded to Google Maps. But unlike most locations on the platform, for some reason the street view images seem to be corrupted, making the entire town look warped and discolored, resembling something completely different from the actual town in real life. If you zoom out- This look like a dream. Like one of them dreams you have when you can't move, bro, them dreams you ever had, if, you, if any of you ever had them before, where like, well, you stuck in one spot and you can't move. This is how I be looking in the background of my dreams, bro. Just like this, like purple, like... Ugh. Not far enough, the glitch disappears. PTSD. And the roads, people, and houses start to look normal again. The location had the same appearance on Google Maps for eight years, until in 2015, Google finally managed to fix the issue by uploading new pictures of New Baltimore to the platform. To this day, it's unknown what caused the glitch, and Google never gave an explanation as to why it happened. Of course, small glitches and equipment errors happen all the time, but what's unusual is that this is the only location on the platform where the entire town looked like this. But what's most disturbing is that even after Google supposedly fixed the glitch around 2015 after 8 years of its existence, some people still reported that there were certain spots in New Baltimore where the street view would temporarily glitch and show a distorted, creepy version of the people and houses. Because Google never disclosed any information about the glitch publicly, people have tried to come up with explanations for years. Many users have claimed that it wasn't a glitch at all, and that New Baltimore is really some kind of portal, while others say the entire th That wasn't no glitch, this is what it actually looks like. Has he been there? Like, is this... Is this, like, is this legit what he's saying? ...town is haunted. To this day, some people still claim that the glitch was never entirely fixed. I'm about, to go, I'm about to go there for myself and see for myself, bro. There's no way. A portal? Come on. In 2019, a man named Jerry Nyman was simulating a school bus route in Florida using Google Maps. At the time, Jerry worked for the transportation department of the Palm Beach County School District, and his job involved making sure the bus routes were safe enough so children could easily get on and off the bus without having to walk close to any busy highways. One day, Jerry got an email from a nearby middle school asking him to make sure the current bus routes were safe, and this is where things took a turn. After reading the email, Jerry realized that the school was close to his ex-girlfriend Erica's house. As he was checking the bus route on Google Maps, he noticed something that looked like a white car at the edge of a man-made lake next to Erica's house. He quickly texted her and asked her if she had ever seen the car. She said no, but offered to go over and take a look. Because the water was brown and murky, she had to ask a neighbor for help. After which, her neighbor confirmed that there was indeed a white car in the retention Oh shit, I see it right there. Pond oh. and called 911. Police showed up and interrogated Jerry, thinking that he might have had something to do with it. But he explained that he had just found the car on Google Maps. Shockingly, after pulling the car out of the pond and looking inside, the police found a man's skeleton still wearing a seatbelt in the driver's seat. As it was later revealed, the car belonged to a man named William Mould, a 40-year-old mortgage broker who had disappeared way back in 1997. The story goes that on November 7th, William was at a nightclub, and at about 9.30pm he called his girlfriend to let her know that he would be heading home soon. According to witnesses, William hadn't really socialized with anyone, and although he'd had several drinks, he didn't appear to be intoxicated when he left the club at around 11pm in his white sedan. That night was the last night anyone would see him alive. After his girlfriend reported him missing, police began an investigation, but with no new leads, the case quickly went cold. Considering how dark the water was in the retention pond, it's- What a coincidence this guy happened to check it mad randomly, and he solved this case. That's insane, and on top of that, it's right- So the people who works for Google, how did this get by, how did this get by them? Like, how didn't y'all see this right here? How did he see it and y'all didn't? It's not Crazy. surprising that nobody had noticed the car for 22 years until it was found on Google Maps. The circumstances around William Mould's disappearance and how his car ended up in the lake remain unknown. This disturbing scene was captured in a public park in a small city in Holland. In 2013, a Reddit user named NCAV posted this image with the caption, A murder near my house on Google Maps. The satellite image shows what appears to be a trail of blood on a dock. The quality isn't great, and it's hard to tell what exactly is happening, but many people have claimed that the image shows two men dragging a dead body into the water. After the post quickly went viral, police launched an investigation to find out whether a murder had actually taken place at the dock. 
Investigators and reporters thought they might get valuable information by interviewing nearby business owners, but nobody had seen anything suspicious. If it was a murder, getting rid of a dead body in the middle of a popular public park in broad daylight is questionable. But as you'll soon see, stranger... It ain't questionable because uh, these days, these these people commit a crime, they don't think, they don't care no more, bro. Like, they, they go do crimes without no masks, they don't cover their face no more. So I, I'm not surprised that they did this at the most, at a public, popular park. I'm not surprised. And more disturbing things have been captured on Google's satellite images. A week after the image was posted, a 52-year-old woman named Jacqueline Kunen claimed that the image shows her and her friend playing with her brown golden retriever, and that the trail of liquid was actually water from the dripping dog, which looks dark red in the picture because of the lighting. While this is a possibility, crime- That's not water. That's definitely blood. Seen investigators aren't fully convinced. Forensic analysts say that the stains look exactly like blood looks in the satellite image, and that the stain patterns on the dock show a clear dragging pattern, as if something heavy had been dragged on the dock, exactly. not a dripping pattern. Years after the original image was captured, a forensic team analyzed the scene with special equipment. They found no traces of blood on the dock, but they said it's possible the blood could have fully faded after so much time. Whether the satellite captured an innocent image of two women playing with a dog or something much more gruesome remains unconfirmed. Strangely, if you look at the dock on Google Maps today, there's a bright red circle with two lines in the center of the dock, but I couldn't find an explanation on what this means. Some type of sacrifice ritual? In a random location in Sonora, Mexico, oh, a Google whoa, Street whoa. View car photographed four masked men standing in the middle of the road. Hold up! This is supposed to be, bro, magic, bro, come on, bro. They couldn't choose a different picture. They had to use the one with, with four guys with masks, looking like they had a cartel ready to, to freaking human, human traffic, uh, traffic human, whatever, human traffic with somebody. Come on, bro. Be for real. What do you like, kids, too? On one side of the road, a man wearing a scream mask can be seen next to another man wearing a Mexican wrestling mask. He got the blicky on him. He definitely got the blicky on him. He tucking something mask over his face. A third person with a werewolf mask stands in the middle of the road alongside another man wearing a balaclava and a hat. After the discovery was posted on Reddit about a year ago, people started coming up with theories to explain the strange scene. One possibility is that the people in the image were following the Mexican Day of the Dead tradition of dressing up in masks and costumes to dance and celebrate their ancestors. On this holiday, it's common in some communities for people to dress up and dance. Well, it's terrifying that they're wearing dresses over jeans. How's that terrifying? <laughs> like some 2000 Disney Channel star. How that's terrifying? How that scary though? The dress over the jeans. I'm more afraid of the damn mask, honestly. Like, and it look, and it look hot outside. It's on the street for money, inviting passersby to dance with them. The legend goes that if you join in and dance with them once, you have to do it for seven years straight to avoid getting chased by ghosts. The Day of the Dead theory sounds possible, however, the picture was taken in April, and the Day of the Dead isn't until November, which means that the people in the image were covering their face for another reason. Many people have speculated online that since the photograph was taken in an area made famous by the Sonora Cartel, the men could be cartel members. The reasons for standing on the road are unclear, but some people think that I can tell you right now why they stand on the road. It's a, it's a cartel. They're waiting for a car to come through there and snatch them up. They're gonna snatch you up, bro. Be careful. Something sinister might have been taking place when the images were captured. The Sonora Cartel is one of the oldest and most notorious drug cartels in Mexico. They made their name as one of the first cartels to ship many different drugs into the U.S. But whether the people in the image are actually cartel members has not been confirmed. Interestingly, this isn't the first sighting of people wearing strange masks on Google Maps. In 2013, Whoa. a group of people was photographed wearing pigeon. This is even scarier than that. This is way. This is cartel right here. This, this is like some cartel activity right here. See that camera? Cartel activity. See no tourists? Cartel. Masks near a railway station in western Tokyo. Although the image is a little creepy, it was later revealed that the whole thing was actually just a staged prank led by a group of art students from a nearby university. But it's unlikely that this is what was happening Cartel. in the images that were taken in Mexico. In March of 2014, a Malaysia Airlines plane with 227 passengers and 12 crew members on board disappeared during a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. The mysterious disappearance of Flight 370 triggered a massive international search operation, 
But three years later, in January 2017, the governments of Malaysia, Australia, and China called off the search. To this day, the reasons for the plane's disappearance are unknown. But because it's known that a plane has to be under manual control to deviate as much from its course as Flight 370 did, most experts speculate that a sort of hijacking operation is the most likely explanation. One year after the search was called off, a man named Ian Wilson claimed that he had found the crash site on Google Maps in a random location in the middle of the Cambodian jungle. Wow. Determined to find the remains of Flight 370, Ian and his brother Jackie traveled to Cambodia to search for the plane. Unfortunately, because the terrain in the jungle was incredibly dangerous, they had to turn back before they could reach the crash site. But the brothers planned to return to the Cambodian jungle sometime in the How future. How they care more than the government? How they decide to take it into their own hands? and the government just drop it. Ain't that crazy? That's insane. Find it. Although it's disturbing to see a plane stranded in the middle of the jungle, authorities have clarified that it's unlikely that this is the lost Malaysia Airlines plane. Random debris was found from Flight 370 on the shores of different countries on the African coast two years before the Google Maps sighting. And it would have been almost impossible for this debris to have made its way from the Cambodian jungle to the beach, across the Indian Ocean, and onto the shores of Madagascar and Tanzania. But there's also evidence that suggests this could be the crash site of Flight 370. For example, at the time the plane lost contact with the operations center, it was reportedly in Cambodian airspace. Also, the missing Malaysia Airlines plane was a Boeing 777, which measures about 242 feet, and using the measuring tool on Google Maps, the length of the plane in the satellite image is almost a perfect match. Some Cambo- Is that accurate? You can't judge it based off that? Off a picture? Like a small image? Cambodian residents also revealed during interviews that they had seen a plane with a kite-like emblem flying overhead in that same area around the date of the crash. The contradicting evidence triggered a conspiracy theory, with people claiming that the debris had been planted on the shores of African countries by the Malaysian government to close the case quickly and avoid having to admit that they completely botched the initial search for the plane. Because it's still unknown where Flight 370 crashed, this could be a possibility. But even if this isn't where Flight 370 went down, the fact that there's a random, undocumented plane stranded in the middle of the Cambodian jungle is pretty unsettling. Yeah, that should be... Yeah, that's insane. And it seems like they don't even care about it. Like, it's like the government really don't be caring about certain things, bro. Like, imagine how many, like, aircrafts is out there t right now at this moment. You're sitting out there in the middle of a jungle somewhere, and nobody's looking for it. Nobody cares. That's, that's crazy. Oh, the story behind this Google Maps image is particularly disturbing. On the night of August 14th, 2009, Kevin Barrera's life was tragically taken on a footpath crossing the railroad tracks that separate North Richmond from San Pablo, California. His remains were discovered the next morning by a passerby, and police soon showed up at the scene of the crime. Investigators never found a motive for the event, and the crime was sadly never solved. Four years later, in 2013, the boy's father was using Google's satellite view, when he noticed something pretty disturbing. For some unknown reason, the satellite image of the area just so happened to be captured on the exact day after the incident. The aerial view shows a police car and a group of five investigators standing next to the tracks. Disturbingly, also seen is Kevin Barrera. After Kevin Barrera's father reported the image, Google Maps took it down eight days later, but the damage to the family had already been done. This area of Richmond, known as the Iron Triangle, is reportedly a big homicide hotspot. Between February and October of 2013, six people were killed near the railroad tracks. Although these kinds of events are still being reported in that area to this day. Why not put cameras over there if it's like if it's stuff happening going down there like almost every year? Like why not just put the cameras over there and get the problem solved? This is the only time one of them was captured by Google's satellite images and shown publicly on the platform. But yo, I ain't seen nobody. Although these kinds of events are still being reported in that area to this day, this is seen as Kevin. Br Where do you see um the the kid's body at, or the guy's body who passed away? I see the cops right here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't see nobody. Let's y'all see it. Yeah, man, that's crazy, man. That's crazy, crazy, crazy. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Thanks for watching.